The last transformation that we are going to learn about is dilations. You should be on page 31 in your notes packet. A dilation is a transformation that either reduces or enlarges a figure to create a similar figure. In a dilation, the figure is enlarged or reduced to a fixed point called the center of dilation. The scale factor of a dilation is the ratio of the length of the side length of the image to the corresponding side length of the original figure. The corresponding sides are going to be proportional. They will not be congruent because again, you have either reduced it or enlarged it. But when you compare the ratios of each side of the image to the ratios of each side of the pre-image, you're going to notice that those ratios should be congruent. The coordinate notation for a dilation is that X and Y become KX and KY, where K is the scale factor. What that means is that you will multiply both coordinates, so both x and y, by the scale factor. Now you can tell whether you are going to have a reduction or an enlargement based on the scale factor. If you are having a reduction, then that means that your scale factor would be greater than zero but less than one. So any number that is between zero and one. As soon as you get to a number that is larger than one, then that is going to be an enlargement. So any number that would be a fraction or a decimal is going to be a reduction. Any number that is larger than one is going to be an enlargement. Now let's look at some examples. Example one says draw a dilation of triangle ABC that has vertices at A10, B33, and C31. We are going to use a scale factor of four. So that scale factor is important. This tells us that our K is going to be four. Well, what this means is that because our scale factor is four, when we are enlarging these points, we have to take each point and we have to rotate the X value and the Y value by four. So our rule here is going to be that X, Y becomes four times X, and four times y. So let's look at what we are going to do. A was originally at one zero. So A prime is going to be at four times one, which is four, and four times zero, which is still zero. B was originally at three, three. So B prime is going to be located at four times three, which is 12, and four times three again, which is also 12. C was located at three, one. So C prime is going to be located at four times three, which is 12, and four times one, which is four. So now all we have to do is graph these points. A prime was located at four zero. So if we start over here at the origin, we would move right four, one, two, three, four. And then we would not move up or down because our Y value is zero. So we would stay right here. And this would be A prime. B prime is at 12, 12. So we're gonna start at the origin and move right 12. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Then we would also move up 12. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So we see that B prime is right here. C prime moves to 12, 4. So if I started here, C prime would move right 12 and then up 4. So up 1, 2, 3, 4. And here is C prime. And then the last step would be to connect these points, which I don't have enough space to do. So mine's going to be all messed up. Sorry. All right. So you can see that what happens is our triangle becomes enlarged. And we knew it was going to be enlarged because our scale factor of four was greater than one. 
And it is similar to our original figure, but it is just blown up. Now example two says find the scale factor. So in example one, we were given the scale factor and we had to just graph it. But in example two, you're given the graph and you have to find the scale factor. So the first thing we would need to do is figure out where our points are located because we're going to need to compare A, B, C, and D to A prime, B prime, C prime, and D prime because we know that we would have multiplied each of these coordinates by another number to get to where they were. So let's look at A. If this is my origin, I see that A is located one unit to the left. So that means it would have an X value of negative one. But then it did not go up or down, so it would have a Y value of zero. So A is located at negative one, zero. Now for B, I see that B is located to the right one, so that would be a positive one for the X value. And then it's down two, so that would be negative two for Y. So B is located at positive one, negative two. Now C, it's right here, so it was located one unit to the left, so that would be negative one for Y, or I mean for X, I'm sorry. And then it's down one, two, three, four, so that's negative four for Y. So C is located at negative one, negative four. D is located two units to the left, so that is negative two for X and then one, two, three units down. So that's negative three for Y. So D is located at negative two, negative three. Well, now we just need to figure out where our image is located. So let's start with A prime. If this is my origin, A prime is located one, two, three units to the left. But again, this one does not move up or down, so it's going to be located at negative three, zero. B prime is down here. So if I started at the origin, I would move one, two, three units right. So that's a positive three for X. Then one, two, three, four, five, six down. So that's negative six for Y. To get to C prime, which is down here, I would have moved one, two, three left and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 down. So that means that I would have been at negative three, negative 12. For D prime, that's located over here. So from the origin, I would have moved one, two, three, four, five, six left. So that would be a negative six for X. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine down. So this would be located at negative six, negative nine. Now, all I've done is found where my points are located. I really need to use that to find my scale factor. Well, I would look at my points and I would ask myself, okay, well, negative one changed to negative three. Well, what, I, what would I multiply negative one by to get negative three? And if you, you can't figure that out, then go to the next one. What would I multiply one by to get three? And what would I have multiplied negative two by to get negative six? Well, I know that one times three is three, and I know that negative two times three is negative six. So it looks like I would have a scale factor of three because I'm multiplying each of these coordinates by three to get these coordinates. So I can check that negative two times three is negative six and negative three times three is negative nine. And that's where D is or D prime is located. For C, negative one times three is negative three. Negative four times three is negative 12. Well, that's where C prime was located. So this tells me that I have a scale factor of three. Example three says draw dilation of quadrilateral ABCD with vertices at A012, B99, C126, and D33. We are going to use a scale factor of one third. So because we have a scale factor of one third, we are going to take each of our coordinates, so our X and our Y coordinates, and multiply each of them by one third. Remember that multiplying by one third is the same as dividing by three. So 
if a was at 0, 12, then a prime is going to be at 0, 1 third times 0. Well, anything times 0 is 0. And then 1 third times 12. Well, 1 third times 12 is 4. B was located at 9, 9. So B prime is going to be located at 1 third times 9, which is 3. And 1 third times 9 again, which is also 3. C was located at 12, 6. So C prime is going to be located at 1 third times 12, which is 4. And 1 third times 6, which is 2. And then finally, D is located at 3, 3. So D prime is going to be located at 1 third times 3, which is 1. And 1 third times 3 again, which is also 1. Now we just need to take these points and we need to graph them on our coordinate plane. So A prime is located at 0, 4. And that means that the X value is 0. So I would not move left or right. The Y value is 4, so I would move up 1, 2, 3, 4, and here is A prime. B prime is at 3, 3, so if I start at the origin, I would move right 3 and then up 3, and it would share a space with D. Prime, with D. C is prime is going to be located at 4, 2, so I'm going to move right 4 and then up 2, and here is C prime. And finally, D prime is located at 1, 1. So I would move right 1 and then up 1, and here is D prime. Then I would just connect my points, and you see that I have another quadrilateral. It is similar to the first one, but it is definitely not congruent because its size has been reduced. Example 4 says find the scale factor of this dilation. Well, again, we want to find out where each of these points is located. So I want you to find where A, B, C, and A prime, B prime, and C prime are located first. A is located five units left and 10 units up, so its coordinates are negative five, 10. B is located five units right, and then it doesn't move up or down, so it's located at five, zero. C is located five units left and five units right, so its coordinates are negative five, negative five. Now for our image, A prime is located one left and two up, so its coordinates are negative one, positive two. B is located one right, and then it does not move up or down, so its coordinates are one, zero. C prime is located one unit left and one unit down, so its coordinates are negative one, negative one. Now we still have to find our scale factor. So let's look at what happened. We know that we started with this pre-image that is very large, and we ended with this image which is very small. So we had a shrunken figure or a reduction. That tells us that our scale factor will definitely be somewhere between 0 and 1, so it's probably going to be a fraction. Well, to figure out what this is, we can look and see, kind of work backwards. If I, got, if I started here and went here, well, I would have taken negative 1 times 5 to get negative 5, and 2 times 5 to get 10. But I worked backwards, so I really was dividing here. Negative 5 divided by 5 is negative 1. 10 divided by 5 is 2. 5 divided by 5 is 1. 0 divided by 5 is 0. Negative 5 divided by 5 is negative 1. And negative 5 divided by 5 is negative 1 again. Well, remember, a scale factor can't be, well, I divided by 5. But dividing by 5 is the same as multiplying by one-fifth. So that means that each of these coordinates over here was multiplied by one-fifth, so our scale factor is one-fifth. Now let's look at some real-world applications of dilations. 
If a rectangle has side lengths of 18 inches and 12 inches, and it is dilated by a scale factor of 75%, what is the perimeter of the new rectangle? Well, let's draw what this would look like. If this was 18 and 12, then I also know this is 18 and this is 12. Well, I would need to find 75% of each of these. So if I multiplied 18 times 75% or 18 times 0.75, then I would get 13.5. Then if I multiplied 12 times 75% or times 0.75, I would get nine. So to find the perimeter, I would add all of those. So if I did 13.5 plus 13.5 plus nine plus nine, I would get a perimeter of 45 inches. A square has vertices of A24, B28, C64, and D68. The square is dilated by enlarging its size by 50%. What is the area of the enlarged square? Well, if you think about this on a coordinate plane, if A was at 2, 4, it would be 2 right and up 4, so there would be A. If B were at 2, 8, it would be 2 right and up 8. If C were at 6, 4, it would be right 6, up 4. And if D were at 6, 8, it would be right 6 and up 8. So our square would look like this. Well, each side length is 4 units. And I know that because from 4 to 8, that's 4 units. And from 2 to 6, that's 4 units. So each of these side lengths is four. Well, if we are enlarging its sides by 50%, well, I would need to know what 50% of four is. Well, that's like asking what is half of four. So 50% of four would be two. Now, here's the part that you have to be careful of. We are enlarging it. Well, if I went from four to two, that's not enlarging. But what we're really doing is enlarging by 50%. So we are enlarging each side by two. That means that my new square would have side lengths of four plus two, which is six. Oops. So if I needed to find the area of that, I would do length times width, so six times six, and I would now get an area of 36 square units. Next, I have a rectangle has dim dimensions of nine feet and 27 feet. So we have nine and 27. And then it's gonna be dilated by a scale factor of three and one third. So because it's three and one third, that is greater than one. So that means it's going to be enlarged and we wanna know the new perimeter, well, we need to find the new side lengths. And remember, there are four side lengths here. So we're going to multiply nine times three and one third. Well, nine times three and one third, if I do, I'm going to get 30. So each of these will be 30. And then if I do 27 times three and one third, I'm going to get 90. So my rectangle would now look like this. And for me to find the new perimeter, I'm just going to add up all of those side lengths. Well, 30 plus 90 plus 30 plus 90 gives me 240. So this would have a perimeter of 240 feet. Next, I need to find the scale factor of the dilation shown. Well, when I look at my original figure, I see that it is large and my dilated figure is small. So I know that this is going to be below one. Well, I can look at my points. A is located here at Z six, zero. And then A prime is located over here at two, zero. 
So it looks like I took from six to two, I would have divided by three. So let's see if that pattern holds out. B is located at zero, six. And B prime is located at zero, two. Well, again, it looks like I divided by three. So let's see if that pattern continues. C is located at negative six, zero. And C prime is located at negative two, zero. So again, it looks like I'm dividing by three. And then D is located at negative six or zero, negative six. And D prime is located at zero, negative two. So because this looks like every time I was uh, taking each one of these and dividing by three, well, we need to remember that when we divide by three, that's the same as multiplying by one third. So that means that the scale factor here is one third.